Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Team One webinar. We're so excited to have you today. We'll be talking all things collaboration, especially in today's hybrid workplace. So I think a lot of the things that we'll be covering in today's webinar will really help with a lot of the challenges that we may be facing um, in today's work world. So with that being said, I just want to do a really quick housekeeping item. We are raffling off our TD 1655 portable monitor. I'm actually using one right now um, in our conference room setup. I love this. It's very thin, fits easily into my backpack. I take it when I'm on the road or when I'm working at a coffee shop. So yeah, we're very excited to be raffling this off. We will contact you via email if you are the lucky winner. So yeah, stay till the end and we'll pull from the attendee list. With that being said, um, before I invite our product manager on our webinar where we're gonna really showcase a lot of cool features of our software live, I wanna kind of show you a quick demo video that shows the inside look of our software. Let's watch the video. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm a product manager here at ViewSonic, and today we're going to be talking about our new ViewSonic Team One. This is an online whiteboard collaborative software that allows you to have your ideas meet where your teams are. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a quick overview of what this product does. As you can see, you have access to pre-made templates, or you can start your own. But from the screen, I'm going to show you that this is a typical whiteboarding software that allows you to have access to things like annotation tools, importing objects such as YouTube videos, and also some collaboration aspects as well. So on the screen, one thing that you're gonna notice is that there is an infinite canvas. This allows you to have all of your team members on one board without interfering with each other's work. Now, of course, this is not possible unless you actually share the board. So moving over here, you're going to notice that you have the ability to share the board directly through an email or through a link with various different editing privileges directly to your teammate. Now, if I am presenting and I want people to just view the board anonymously, there is also a QR share code option as well. From here, you're gonna note that you can also insert videos, and these are gonna play directly in the canvas here. Now, of course, you also have the ability to navigate over and have things like live URL links, and those are gonna take you directly to the website so you can keep your ideas all in one concise space. Now, when I have gone ahead and used this board, one of the things that I wanna know is that with Team One, you can use this product across various different devices. So wherever you are, you are able to interact with your teams on Team One. But I am using an interactive board, and the great thing about this product is that it is enhanced using an interactive board. So one of the tools that we have is an AI handwriting recognition tool. This allows me to capture the flow charts that I have drawn out. And of course, sometimes you're gonna run into coworkers who have not the best handwriting. This is gonna make it so that it is a lot more neat and organized and transform it into a digital shape for easy viewing later on. There are also more collaboration tools that allow you to interact with your teams in a much easier and better way. One of those tools is the AI summarization for the sticky notes. From what I've done here is I've already had a brainstorming session with my team. This is going to allow us to see those sticky notes and the AI is going to put it in a one to two sentence summary so we know our key takeaways. Moving over to our map view, some other things that you're gonna note that allow you to more easily access and work with your team. One of the things to make it more easier to interact with the team is going to be the voting tool. I have the ability to create a voting session. This is going to select the area and I've already created a voting session based on our sticky notes so that I can have my team vote for their feature. This helps with group consensus and allows you to figure out what you should most focus on. There are other tools in Team One that allow you to make sure that you are collaborating and also finding what makes your team most efficient. So all of these tools come together to help you and your team be more prepared for your next meeting or your next project. For more information about Team One, please visit ViewSonic.com. Thank you. Awesome, that was such a cool demo video that Haley showed us today. I can't wait to invite her on this webinar. Um, let's dive right in. My name's Mina, I'm marketing manager here at ViewSonic, and I'm excited to finally introduce our product manager of Team One, Haley. Hi everyone, I am Haley. Um, I am here with ViewSonic today, and I'm very excited to talk about all things about collaboration, especially with Team One. So thank you so much for joining us. 
Hi, Haley. Um, I see that you're in our executive conference room here in our Brea headquarter office. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your setup? I see you're in front of one of our touch boards right now. Yeah, absolutely. So right now we're in front of our ultra wide IFP. Um, this is a 105 inch screen. It's an interactive board using IR touch. Um, but this is something that we have set up in, in several of our conference rooms right now. We've set up these collaboration hubs so that we're able to work on things like Team One um, and work directly on the board. Um, I also have my computer set up. You can also do your slot in PC because these do have an OPS slot in the back. Um, but this overall allows you to be able to collaborate a little bit more seamlessly. So as you can see, it's a quite a large screen behind me, but we're going to get more into that later when I start to interact with the board. That's awesome, Haley. And I could see that that's that ultra wide. So that 21 by nine aspect ratio. Um, I personally love using that board when I'm in the office because you could have multiple people annotating on it and then also collaborating together. And then folks that are sitting inside the conference room, you know, because of that real estate, you're just able to see everything that we're doing together, whether it's for a brainstorm session. So I love your setup. Um, I think we all enjoyed your demo video that we played earlier. Um, there was a feature that actually really caught my eye and it was the AI feature. And I know AI has kind of been a very hot topic, you know, this past year. And so I was wondering if you could actually show us some of those AI features live here today for our audience. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go to the screen right now. Um, as you're going to see is I'm just going to go to the portion where I want to go to on my board. I've set up a couple of things for us to look at today. And one of those things is using sticky notes for AI. So we do have an AI summarization tool that allows you to get like a one to two sentence brief synopsis of all of the brainstorming sessions that you've taken place. So this is something extremely helpful if you're working with a large group and you're trying to get your ideas out. Um, this AI tool, as you can see, is going to use um, our sticky note feature. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these sticky notes here. And there's this fun star sparkle icon, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to bring up this AI summarization. So once I do that, it's going to briefly give me a one to two sentence idea of what they think that the brainstorm is trying to do. So as you can see, I did this one previously. And the idea here is to take your ideas, make them um, short and concise so that when you're done with your session, you have an idea of how to move forward, especially great for people who missed out on the meeting too. Awesome. Um, I love how when if, if you're doing like a session and you're annotating either with your finger or with the cursor or even the stylus on that touch board, right? Like your handwriting can be messy, but we're trans transforming that into digital text or digital shapes like that flow chart example that you shared. Yeah, yeah. It's really making everything legible, right, Haley? Yes. And I can show that again, too. Um, one of the great things about this is that because we're doing it on an interactive board, we're able to actually work around and start writing on the board. So it's supposed to be a more natural handwriting experience. So instead of having to you know, put digital text in, you can get directly into your brainstorming session by writing directly on the board. So like I said with the flow chart too, if I want to quickly brainstorm with my group, I can go ahead and draw a shape here and again, I can have the AI tool be able to pick up on what it thinks that I'm trying to do. It's gonna give me a couple of ideas of what it thinks that I'm trying to apply. And then it's gonna bring in this digital shape. Definitely good for people with really bad handwriting. Um, makes it a lot more eligible to, to see. Um, definitely a better writing experience and overall just great for everyone on the team. So thank you for letting me show that part. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love how it makes everything more legible, easier to read for your teammates, because this is a live infinite canvas board that you're sharing with your team members. So yeah, I'm all for it. Um, I wanted to point something out that I saw in the demo video was built in templates. And that really caught my eye as well, because you're not starting from scratch, especially when you're working with such a big canvas like Team One. Can you kind of walk us through Haley? Um, a, an example of a template and how you know teams or people in this audience might be able to use that? Yeah, um, I do have one already set up on my board, but I can show you how you can go ahead and add your templates um, directly from Team One. We have an entire library. I'll show that in a second. Um, but to go ahead and move over here, first of all, let me get over to my mapped out section here. 
one of the things that I wanted to briefly share was this SWOT analysis. So this is one of the key ones that we use often here at ViewSonic, um, especially on the marketing or product management side. Um, this is something that allows you to more easily work with your group um, to be able to map out your ideas. Because Team One isn't an infinite canvas, um, that means there's a lot of room for you to build out space. And especially when you're working with different collaborators, um, you wanna be able to make sure that you're using your space most effectively. So one of the things that I like about the SWOT analysis here, as you can see, is that it already has a pre-made template so that all you have to do is maybe zoom into the spot of your choice and begin writing using the sticky notes. You can take notes right over it. The idea is to make it as simple and easy um, to get up and running during your meeting so you're not spending time formatting things. So if you wanna learn more about some of our templates, I'm gonna walk over here to our toolbar and show you our template over here. So this is our large library of different types of templates that we have available. Definitely focused on the enterprise and business space, but we also do have some for education focused as well. So really good for small groups or teams that are needing to figure out things like roadmaps. So similar to the SWOT analysis, this is a great, a great place for you to be able to um, add in a template and get started without having to recreate everything every single time you want to have a meeting. Thank you for showing us that, Haley. Um, I love how there's just a wide variety of different templates that you could use for your use case or for your workflow. Um, thank you for showing us a SWOT one. I think that one's commonly used, right? At least I'm on the marketing side. So whenever we're analyzing product launches or any types of projects, we're always kind of looking at the strengths, weaknesses, threats, opportunities. So thank you for that. Um, you know, I'm just curious, how about the other way around, right? So those are native forms that are built into Team One. How about me working in marketing? You know, I have PowerPoint files, I have YouTube videos, I have PDF files that I'm constantly working or creating. Are we able to import that into our board within Team One? Yes, um, we have cloud integration. So I'm using OneDrive for my personal information, also for my work files. And by binding that cloud integration, I'm able to access all of my cloud storage and I can easily import things like um, PDFs, images, um, PowerPoints directly into my board. The great thing with this is that if I'm working on a large presentation, I could either take my notes and work with my group, or I can actually present directly from the board as well. So I'll just quickly show you an example. Um, so over here, I have a couple of items here that I wanted to share. Um, so this is an example of a slide that I pulled in. It's just one of our gaming templates that we have at ViewSonic. So this was a page from a PowerPoint document. Um, so to show you how I easily added it, I'm going to walk over here to our import file. And if you can see at the very bottom, there is a OneDrive link. Um, this is going to be a setup. So for us um, at ViewSonic, we do have some security protocol where I'll need to log in occasionally. Um, but typically, I'll have access to everything here. So once I want to import something directly, I would be able to access it. Um, I even excuse me, I even have access to my other files um, within my other marketing files that I can easily import directly. Um, PowerPoints are super easy to add. You can add either a single slide or all the slides directly and be able to work on your ideas all in one area. I love that. I mean, just having one place for all of your different files to collaborate together. Um, and I know we keep talking about this infinite canvas, but I think it's really useful here, right? Because you're dropping in either the native templates within Team One or other files that you could import from the cloud or from other sources. Um, and, you know, actually, Haley, this is a really good segue into meeting inclusivity and kind of, you know, making sure that we're all kind of working on this live board together. Um, I know that there was like a follow feature as well as linking objects and I think this is really important in today's hybrid workplace where, you know, we're all kind of looking at the board from different places. Some are in the office, some are remote, you know, and then we're all you're sharing your screen, for example. And how are we trying to follow along, you know, with all these different files? Can you kind of show us live how that works? Yes. And I've been using the linking feature so far. It just helps me navigate around the screen a little bit easier. Um, but I can demonstrate that as well. So let's say I'm doing this presentation and I want it to link out to a 
different items. So we have this great separate menu that pops up and it has an option to either copy a link to selection or link to an object. So for me, I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna find the one of my choice. So let's say I'm presenting in a meeting and I want us to go from our data in our PowerPoint directly to a video. And maybe this is to show the different types of things that we're able to put together, which by the way, you can easily import things like YouTube videos and URLs directly in here and it will play. Um, but once I link it, what you'll see is there is an arrow here and you're going to see a couple of cursors, which is going to lead me to my next part in just a second. Because it is an infinite canvas, you want to make sure that everyone is focused on the content that you picked. So for example, I have this linking set up, but now let's say I have all of these cursors, which represent our different colleagues in the board at the same time. If we're in the middle of a meeting and I want to use this as a presentation, I can do an option through our follow me settings over here. So by clicking down, I can see all of these different names here. I can see where trade show one is and I'm following them around on the screen. I can go ahead and cancel that. And as you can see, two people are following me on the board right now. So if I wanted them to stop following me, I could have that option. But essentially what that means is that wherever I go on the screen, they're gonna see the same thing as me. So this makes sure that everyone's keeping the focused um, on the content that you have at hand and make sure that you're actually making a successful meeting. Um, it's so easy for people to get distracted, especially if you have so much content on one board, keeps them all focused in one spot. So now that I've have this um, set up with the linking and I have people following me, when I am done presenting on my presentation file, I can link back to the video and start playing directly here. So this is just a quick and easy way to get people involved. And as you can also see, there are several people that are going to come up and you can also share later on. So that's one of those features. Thank you for that, Haley. Um, I'm just thinking like when I'm on a Teams or Zoom call and I'm sharing my screen, I'm always like, can you guys see, like, you know, I have to like do my cursor, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, are you guys following along? But I think that follow feature that you just showed, and um, the linking objects makes it so easy that everyone that the board is being shared to, they can just easily follow you. So when you are moving your cursor on the interactive touch panel or from your computer, you know, the user is able to just see it easily. So that's a really cool function. Um, you kind of did this at the end, the share, where you were sharing the board. And I saw that there's different user roles. And I was wondering if you could kind of walk us through the different user roles and what they mean. and you know, are people able to view it? Are they able to edit it? Um, yeah, can you show us that real quick? Of course. And we put these different permissions in here for a variety of reasons. Um, typically when you're in a team meeting, um, you probably want to have everyone to have access to the board. But let's say you are doing a report out to your manager or if you're doing um, agency work, you want to be able to present to your client and sometimes you don't want them to edit the board and accidentally make changes so we do have the view only rights as well so i'll go over here to share you um, quickly so once i hit the share button this image pops up behind me and you're going to notice that there are a couple different options to share so once you choose the permissions um, the three ones that we have are view only so again that's exactly what it sounds like you're only looking at the content on the screen you can give edit privileges. So they're gonna be able to edit the screen as you would. Um, but the step up of, um, above that would be the can and edit and manage. So editing and managing means that you're gonna be able to affect the rights of different permissions of users in your group as well. You can create new boards within your teams or you can separate by projects. So this gives you a little bit more control. This is definitely something better for um, project managers who are sharing it with their product owners, probably giving them some information about being able to manage the team as a whole. But once you've selected these, um, you can either send it directly through an email or you can copy the link, put it in your Teams chat, um, whatever it may be, um, along with the permission. So once you copy that link, it's going to work similar to any other type of SharePoint file or OneDrive link. Um, they'll have access directly into Team One. That's awesome. Um, I was just thinking, I think a lot of us here probably use Google programs or Microsoft. So we're probably already familiar with sharing our PowerPoint 
or sharing our Google Doc and, you know, kind of managing access for each user. So I think a lot of the user roles that you just shared right now in Team One will come very natively to some of our folks here. Um, but yeah, thank you for walking us through that. I kind of wanted to ask you about the voting feature. We saw it in the video and my first thought was, oh, this is such a great team building activity. Or if you're trying to do an internal like team feedback on a team call, um, you know, after a project or after a product launch, is that something we can do live right now, that voting feature? Yeah, and because I have a couple of people on the board too, they might be able to follow around with me. Um, this is one of my personal favorite features as well. So I'm gonna go back to our example of the sticky notes since I already had them set up. Um, so this is an example of how you could set up a voting um, in a meeting or even in the preparation of a meeting if you wanna figure out what you want to focus on for your next strategy. So for this example, we're talking about the most important feature to add to team one. So I'm gonna do something very similar to what I did earlier with the AI summarization. I am going to select all these sticky notes and I am also going to have the options here. So this is one way to make sure that you have all of the items selected and in view. But what I'll do is I'm gonna go over to this square with two dots. It almost looks like a dice. Um, by selecting it, um, you'll see again that it's gonna give me an option to reselect the area of my choice. So I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit closer so we can focus directly on these sticky notes that I just used. And when I come over to the side, there's gonna be a couple of options. So I can allow the participants to have multiple votes. So I'm gonna keep it at the default of three, but you can also have them choose what to vote on. What this does is that it's gonna open up a voting tool icon specifically on the objects of your choice. Um, I wanted to do it on the sticky notes only, so I'm gonna keep it there, um, but you can see there are other options as well. So if you need to just do one vote per object, or if you wanna set a timer, um, you have the option between three, five, and 10 minutes. So once I start this, um, as you can see, the timer begins to count down and I have the option with these voting icons to go ahead and cast my vote. So what this does is that it's going to allow um, all of my teammates to be able to see the voting at one time. And if we were trying to come up with a feature set together, they would be able to come in here and start voting by doing the same thing by adding a vote here and moving around. So what I can also do is I can track voting from here. So this means I can track progress. I can see which votes are winning right now. Um, and I can also see who has needed to vote as well. Once it's done, I can go ahead and choose to say I'm done or end for all since I'm managing the vote. I'm gonna end for all right now. And I'm gonna end the session. What this does is it brings up our results. So the results allow you to see winners, the losers, or you can also see your past results. So you can track progress. You can see where your ideas have changed over time, especially if you're doing a similar vote. Um, this can also be a great and simple activity for team bonding. It can be as simple as voting for the next place you want to go out on your team outing. Uh, maybe it's to a winery or to an island or whatever it may be, um, if we're going to go extravagant like that. But we use this um, for figuring out how we want to move along with either our features for our different products or even for marketing in general. So this is a tool that I highly recommend using, trying out with your team, um, something I personally like to use all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and close it out here. And that is essentially the voting feature. Thank you for sharing that, Haley. Um, I was voting while Haley was doing that live demo, it was so easy to use. Um, I was able to quickly vote and then click I'm done. And then when she shared the results, I as an end user was also able to see all the results and you know what lost, what ranked first. So I could totally see this being used in a corporate setting as well as a higher ed or yeah, in an education setting as well, where you're just trying to gather feedback from your students or you know your team, your coworkers and your team members as well. Um, Haley, so question for you earlier, you kind of showed how to import files, right? Like if I was using PowerPoint and I want to import my slide into Team One, how about the other way? What if, you know, me and my colleague are on that board right behind you in the conference room and we're annotating and doing sticky notes and kind of brainstorming for something coming up? And once we're done with that brainstorm session, you know, are we able to export that so that we could 
put it on a PowerPoint or put it in a Word doc and then email it to my boss, for example. Is that something that's possible? Yeah, absolutely. And I would say the best way to share the board would be to be directly in uh, Team One and share it with either view access or editing privileges. But in some cases, that's not going to be possible. Or like in the example that you mentioned about sharing it out with your boss, maybe it's something that you just need to present in a PowerPoint and send it over in a more traditional environment. So what we can do is we do have an export tool. So that's going to be this icon up at the top over here. It looks like a small box um, with an arrow pointing down. And this is going to be our export option. So similar to our other tools, you can select either a certain area or the entire board. So a couple, a couple of other options that you have is to either export it as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, note, PNG is going to come in with a blank background. So this is good if you're doing certain objects or if you're mapping out flowcharts, for example, and want to move it over directly to a PowerPoint. But if you want to capture the entire background, then go a JPEG. So from here, um, you can choose how you're going to export it. And you can either export it and it will download a link or you can email the link directly to your email. So once I export it, it's going to come up in my downloads and it will be as easily as being able to open the file, see my screenshot, take it, copy paste, either put it into PowerPoint, Google Slides or into an email as well. So super easy, very simple, um, definitely in the use case for those who don't have access to Team One just yet or if they just need a snippet of what you're working on. Very cool, thank you for that. Um, yeah, super easy to export um, into a PNG and then attach it in your email or share it however you need. So thank you for walking us through that. Um, so Haley here, as you know, at ViewSonic, we're a Teams environment, so we're always on Teams calls. I was just curious, like, is there any compatibility with Teams and Team One? Like, can I easily share my board? Um, yeah, just curious about that. Yes. So there are several different ways that you can do it. Um, but if you're using the native uh, Microsoft Teams application on your desktop computer, you can add it as an application. So the next time you're in a meeting, you have an option to go into Microsoft Teams. There's an app icon. By selecting that, you can just search. So search Team One, and you're going to get an option to download and attach your Team One directly to your Teams meeting. So it's very similar to what we've been doing here with our board where we are interacting together, but instead of having everyone have to pull up in their own browser or log in from their own device, it's going to be in one central area in that Microsoft Teams. So you can keep it pinned. Um, I know that Mina, you and I will um, tend to have meetings together. So in the future, we can pin a Team One board to our calls and easily access the same board over and over again and keep a strong record of our notes and progress. That's very cool. I love how there's that integration with teams and that we could just easily share boards and kind of pick it up where we left off and really allow for that seamless workflow. Because I know we're all trying to be more efficient here. So really love that. Um, let's talk about devices. You know, like mm -hmm. clearly you're in front of a touch board. I have my laptop here and my portable where I'm logged into your board. Can you kind of walk us through the different devices that Team One is compatible with? Yes, so I am using it on an IFP I'm using Windows right now. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is that I do have um, browsers up at the top. So this is just using any browser of my choice. Um, this allows me to be able to be on any device really. So um, I am using, sometimes I'll use Chrome, sometimes I'll use Edge, just depends. Um, but it's easy to get it set up either on my Surface Pro laptop. Um, it also is compatible with Mac. Um, you can even use it on tablets, though, as well. So iPads, um, so for on the go. Um, if I am in a rush and I need to quickly see something, I can also look at it on my mobile. I would say for the best experience, keep it on a computer if possible. But you are not tied to an interactive board to use Team One. You can still use the traditional keyboard and mouse. But I will say that Team One really has been optimized and enhanced for a touch experience. So there have been some features that I have been using with um, touch that we can um, talk about more later. Um, but really, it's been focused on making it a very seamless and natural experience, um, kind of going back to our old days of using either chalkboards or whiteboards uh, for doing these brainstorming sessions in a room. 
but no fear if you don't want the browser set up. We do also <laughs> have a extend screen here. So that's going to take up the entire screen and you don't have to worry about all the different tabs that you're working on. Gotcha. And you know, while we're on the topic of touch, I, I'm seeing you like using one finger, sometimes two fingers as you're navigating the board and showing our audience all of the different features of Team One. Can you kind of talk through us like what those different finger gestures mean and how you know Team One is optimized for touch? Yeah. Um, so as I've been navigating around the board, I've been using two fingers. That allows me to just easily navigate. Um, we do have a hand icon down at the bottom. However, I personally like to use the two fingers because it allows me to have a little bit more freedom of moving around. Um, the other thing is that since it is an infinite canvas, you have the option to zoom in and out. So I'm either going to pinch out or pinch in um, to zoom in or out. And so the other thing that I wanted to share is that one finger is for select, but a long press on the board also opens up this special menu that we have uh, put together for using touch. Um, so for example, I can just easily use one finger to move things around, or I can use my pen icon to write. We can also use the stylus if we wanted. But again, using this touch menu makes it a lot simpler and faster to work on items at once. Um, the other thing is that um, you also have the option to select. So when I select, I can also use three fingers to pivot around. So instead of having to get that mouse out or using a Bluetooth mouse, if you're using an interactive board, we made it simple for you to be able to get into editing items without having to be tied physically to any specific mouse or keyboard. We wanted to make it feel natural and seamless with writing and just make it a better experience um, so you're not tied down to anything. So these are like the main tools that I use. I love using this quick menu, um, especially if I want to quickly write on the board here. I would definitely recommend trying this out um, on a touch board and see what it can do for you. Awesome. Um, yeah, I feel like touch is now intuitive, right? For this generation and next, I'm just thinking in my car too, everything is touch. Um, and my son too, right? Like on the TV, he's just trying to like use his fingers to navigate through Netflix. So yeah, definitely whether it's iPad or the touch board, um, I feel like touch is definitely what's more intuitive for us. And I learned something new. I thought it was just one or two fingers, but you kind of showed us that three finger gesture too, um, which you could also do on your computer with the mouse, I'm assuming. Um, so that's very cool. You know, Haley, I really appreciate your time. I think you've really given us a lot of cool features and kind of showed it to us live and through the demo video as well. Um, you know, we do have a mixed audience on this call. It ranges from higher ed folks to AV resellers um, to those who are more technical. And so I'm just curious, like, have you seen Team One being used? Like, do you have like a use case from any of our customers or clients? Like, how are they using it today for their workflow? Yeah, I mean, beyond the traditional conference room environment where you're using it for meetings, we've also seen it in manufacturing as well. So different types of companies are really utilizing this for specific needs if they need to track data analytics. It's a quick and easy place where they can get together with their teams and look at some of the data that's being pulled out. The reason why Team One seems to be a best fit for them is because sometimes they're having to do these hybrid meetings when they need to look at specific data for the products. Um, also, if they're wor working across different locations, being able to all be on the board at the same time and kind of get that, um, that report out has been very helpful. And it also seems that it makes it easy for them because they are very used to using pen and paper for writing down mm. their ideas. Now they don't have to worry about taking a blurry picture on their iPhone and then emailing it out to everyone. Um, this removes a lot of those additional steps that it usually would require if you're trying to get that more natural experience of either writing down notes or even just getting everyone on board at the same time. It's a very simple process to make sure that people have access to what you've been talking about. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. It's I, I keep telling people, I'm like, it's live. So any changes, anything you add there, it gets saved automatically. You don't have to click save. It's all in the cloud. And then so when the next person logs in and views it, all of your notes are there and they can also do add and do the same. So yeah, thank you, Haley. Um, I'm just gonna 
pivot now to Q&A because I did see some questions trickle in um, and I think we're good on time. So we'll try to kind of go through the questions um, here. And I guess, Haley, this is a question for you. Uh, someone was asking, does Team One store any data on cloud servers? And if yes, where are those cloud servers located? Yes, so that's a great question. Um, so we're using AWS, which is inherently more of a secure server for keeping our information in. Um, anything for your cloud storage is going to be pulled directly from your cloud integration of choice. But we do also have security white papers about this. Um, so we do have documentation about data residency um, options that ViewSonic provides. So we can definitely provide those um, links after this call. And we also do have an entire knowledge base talking about the security that comes with Team One as well. So that's going to be a great place for you to see any ports that you might need to open or any more specifics about how we manage our data encryption, um, things like that. It's all on our knowledge base right now. Yes. And thank you for that reminder, Haley. Um, just for the audience, you know, after this webinar, please do expect an email from us. We'll have a recording of the webinar and then we'll also include the knowledge base articles that Haley just mentioned that kind of goes a little bit more in depth into the cloud data server as well. Um, I see another question here about pricing for Team One. You know, if there's tiers and how that kind of works. Yes, so this is something that we're going to be very excited to be presenting um, within the next few months. Um, we do have a free trial for you all to try right now. And we will have a version that is going to be available for um, our existing hardware customers as well as new. Um, so stay tuned for that information. But we will have an enhanced version of Team One that will be available for a subscription, and we will do it per be per license. Um, but if this is something that you want to try out with your team, I um, highly encourage you to go to um, viewsonic.com slash Team One. And from there, you're going to be able to sign up directly for our trial. Um, be really great to have you try it, see how it can work for your team, and then we can get together and talk more about how this can work with your overall um, budget or even just goals as a company moving into purchasing season. Absolutely. So yes, it's free trial for individual users. So please, you know, feel free to set up, go in there, create an account and then play around and have fun. Mm -hmm. um, another question here is um, we can offer edit access to everyone. So I think it's about the user roles, Haley, um, but are we able to lock certain parts of the presentation or the board? so that people can't change it. I think he's probably asking about, can you just view and then maybe have some things um, uneditable? Mm, that's a great option. Um, I think that's something that we can probably get back to our development team. Um, we do have an option right now to specifically lock an item on the screen. So for example, here, um, let me get to, let's say, going back to our PowerPoint example, um, if you don't want people to delete um, your presentation or the flowchart that you've worked on, one of the tools that we do have is, again, um, up in this additional menu here, once I select an object, there is a lock icon. Once it's locked, um, I didn't press it right there. So once it's locked, you're going to notice I'm not able to move it around. It is put into place. So that is one maybe potential workaround. But maybe individual access, we can bring that back to our development team and see what we can provide. So that is just one area. Um, maybe it works for you. Let us know. Yeah, that's a great question because I've definitely used that lock feature so that, you know, people can't change it or move because we're working with shapes, right, and text so that mm -hmm. people can't move it. But yeah, being able to edit or unedit, that is something that we can potentially take back to our development team, as Haley said. Um, just for the audience, we're always open to customer feedback. So we'd love for you to go in there and play with it. And you could always you know, shoot myself and Haley an email. Um, it's just our first name, nina.shin at bsonic.com. And then Haley's is haley.hunt at bsonic.com because we're always open to getting any of that feedback. But very great question. We have another one about the handwriting recognition capability and if it works with different languages besides English. I'm not too sure about this one, Haley, do you know? I don't want to give an answer just yet um, in case I am incorrect. So maybe we can go back and make sure that we're giving you the correct answer at the end. Um, I know that we do have Team One set up for different languages across um, the United, well, across uh, the entire globe. So in the United yeah. States, we do have different languages. And you can set your preference for the language for the entire Team One. 
um, set up, but I'm going to go back and make sure that we can also have different languages supported if you have selected Team One as your native language. But gotcha. that is a great question. We are a global company, and so we do have to support different regions and different languages at a time. Um, I will get back to you on making sure that we have that either translation or be able to read other languages. Yes, and I think we have time for one more question. And for those other questions that we were not able to address, again, um, please reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help. Um, but the last question is multi-touch capability. Um, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, it's specifically to the board that you're in front of, Haley. Um, the question is how many people can stand around a board and use it as a whiteboard together? Let's assume multiple people are touching the display at the same time. Another really good question. Yes. Um, so our interactive boards can have a range from um, 33 points of touch all the way up to around 40. What that usually means with an interactive board is that like 40 individual fingers could be interacting with the board. We know that you're probably not going to have that many people working on one board at a single time. At least we hope not. Um, there'll be a lot of uh, people in one room. Um, however, you do have that functionality and capability for you to use. That's part of the reason why I was able to use um, multiple fingers for the different gestures is because it does recognize multiple points of touch. We do have a couple of tools that are um, specifically designated so that we can have multiple people writing on the screen at one time. Of course, you can use the normal pen, but to show you our specific option for um, writing on the board, I'm gonna go to the pen tool here. So I could have um, you know, 10 people perhaps in a meeting um, using the pen tool to write on the board. Um, however, we also have this double pen icon here, and this is going to put in a multi-pen mode. This makes sure that everyone has access to a stylus and be able to write on it. Otherwise, use your finger and you would still be able to have a good amount of people up at the board at one time. That's a great question, thank you. Yeah, that was a really good question. I, I don't think I've used that multi-pen function, so that's really cool. And um, I'm just thinking, you know, me and my colleague, we were actually annotating together on that same board that Haley's in front of. And I, I wanna say it's like really ideal for two to three, like I know, I know the theoretically it's 40, touch points, right, Haley? You said like 40 yes. fingers. But yeah, that's probably not very ideal. Like when I'm thinking of actual people or bodies in front of it, yeah, probably two to three would be ideal. Um, and we were kind of, I was using a stylus. My colleague was just using his fingers to kind of navigate the board and, you know, saying, oh, how about this section? So yeah, that that's an awesome question. Yeah. And, and one other yeah. point that I would like to make too is that um, you are not tied to who can do it um, physically on the panel. You can also have people mm -hmm. working on the same board from their own device. Um, and we do have a set of concurrent users that we do have set up. Um, I believe for our higher range, it's about um, 200 concurrent users at one time. So um, that there is a lot of users. Um, we'll provide you a list of um, the information for how many users per board, um, per either individual access or for an entity access. Um, I believe that's already on our um, site as well, but look up concurrent users. Um, that is going to mean that besides the people that you have physically in the room working on one board, that's the amount of users who can actually be on your board at one time, working, editing, um, leaving notes. Um, so therefore you, you can definitely have a lot of people working on one board at the same time. That's awesome. Thank you, Haley. Thank you for your time. Um, I know that we're, we got to wrap up here shortly, but I do want to let the audience know that we will address your questions. If you could reach out to us via email, or you could always connect with either of us on LinkedIn. Um, and then we will also be sending a follow-up email later this week that will include the knowledge base articles or recording of this webinar again. And then if you are the lucky winner for our TD 1655, we will reach out to you individually via email as well. So yeah, thank you for your time. Um, as Haley said, it is free trial right now for our software. So we encourage everyone to go in there, play around with it. We are open to suggestions. Um, there's, I think just have fun with it. If you have any ideas for templates or things that can improve, we are all ears. And um, yeah, we're just looking to improve the product as well and get users on there. So yeah, have fun. And thank you everyone for your time.